We're back, ladies and gentlemen, to those messages. And I find myself with Chris Bador. Is that pronounced properly? Like a bow on a door, yeah, okay. Bador. Yeah. 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 That's easy. Uh, just got to visualize it. And uh, for those of you who don't know him, he's uh, one of the many behind the ancient city poets. That's right. And they're here in, in St. Augustine. Uh, I like poetry. Um, I wrote a little when I was in school. And when I discovered that that was that, that this group, I, I thought it was so interesting. I remember I went once. And, yeah, last uh, year. It was so much fun. Good, I mean, I'm glad you liked it. There was a lot of uh, interesting, um, let's say a festival of verbal activity, but it was very, very, very nice. Yeah. So, Chris, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Connecticut in Fairfield County, uh, uh, Western Connecticut. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you miss the snow? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I shoveled my fair share of snow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, dues. yeah, uh -huh. the minute that snow is falling, we had to uh -huh. get it all shoveled out. And, uh, you know, but moving down here to St. Augustine, uh, we have our uh, three months inside uh -huh. with the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. up north, you yeah. have your three months uh, with the snow and all. Right, and, uh, right. I can't say I really like the heat, but yeah. I'm not going to go, uh, you know, I, I feel it's better to deal with what you're at at yeah. that moment. At that and, moment. Yeah. yeah. So, good philosophy. Yeah. Good, good survive, uh, for, to, to, to tolerate. Uh, yeah, I, I remember whatever. the cold uh -huh. and waiting for the train going That's into funny. work into New York mm -hmm. City and a hole in my boot. Uh -huh. And it was just very cold. Uh -oh. At that point, mm -hmm. I wasn't enjoying mm -hmm. the snow. Yeah, but, I grew you know, up in the I city. Just, I, I, yeah. I remember cold, cold days, brutal cold days. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to ask you is basically when you grew up, um, how did poetry get you at the end? I mean, you yeah, start sure. young. What, what yeah. do you think was the, the catalyst, the, the thing that probably... I don't know. It's, it's interesting because I was exposed to it like other people in grade school and right. so forth. And uh, then, uh, you know, I think the sixth grade poetry contest, we had to learn a poem. And so I found a Shel Silverstein poem and tried to memorize it. But, you know, that was tough to do. And then, of course, the, uh, um, uh, the Christmas uh, poem, uh, um, you know, had to memorize that too. The Twist the Night Before Christmas mm -hmm. and all through the house. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, but uh, it was all like um, assignments right. and uh, not something that, uh, you know, I was really uh, interested in. Right. Right. And uh, I would say that uh, actually my earliest memory of poetry was uh, I was, uh, I found out where the Christmas presents were hidden. And how, how old were you? Yeah, how old were you probably? Um, probably like, uh, you know, a young kid. I knew, you know, that uh, um, there were other people behind the scenes with Santa Claus <laughs> Santa and all Claus that. Was a, yeah, was I didn't want to do job. any spoiler yeah, 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 alert on? for any younger viewers uh -huh. and all that. But uh, so uh, I was down there in the um, laundry room uh, looking around for um, maybe some Christmas presents that hadn't been wrapped up yet. And I came across one of those marble composition notebooks yes. and it was poems that my mom was writing and uh, oh, you know wow. some really um, it's like finding her diary that's it yeah really deep yeah. stuff and uh, so at that point I you know I kind of viewed my mom a bit differently you know here is a, a poet a, someone you know uh, who is not just a, a mom yeah, you, know. you dress right breakfast on the table you know behave now suddenly you yeah. it's like uh, like someone says the two dimensions, suddenly you see that third dimension. That's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I didn't really catch the poetry bug until probably uh, it was uh, college, and uh, I started reading Charles Bukowski, who was the barroom bard, the barroom Bar poet. Barfly. Yeah, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, uh, and the movie Barfly had just mm -hmm. come out, and he wrote the screenplay for that, and it was supposed to be like a, a co um, combination of all his uh, sort of short stories and so forth. And mm -hmm. so then I figured, well, you know, if I drink a beer, I could write a poem. And, so, uh, so, you, yeah, yeah. So, so you think he signed, conveyed the message that if you're passionate, anyone could really do this? That's it, because Charles Bukowski's 
story was that he was a, a mailman first, and he worked at the post office year after year after year. Then he would punch out and write some poems and so forth. But uh, he was the proof that a working man could be a poet. Mm -hmm. and, and I took that um, mentality with me when I graduated from uh, college and uh, I got a, a job in New York City. I had to ride the train uh, an hour and a half back and forth. So it was three hours on the train. And uh, I thought, okay, well, I can be a, a screenwriter because it was an art school. And so I started to try to write a screenplay. Because you had that commuting time. Yeah, it's yeah, you know, up. and it was back in the day and um, uh, handwritten with a notepad and so forth. But, you know, uh, one day that um, the screenplay just wasn't flowing and I wrote a poem. And then, and then it happened again like a week later. And a year after that daily train commute, I found like 60 poems in the notebook and uh, you know all these angst ridden 27 year old you know type of things yeah and so I um, um, got into uh, the um, I found out that I could actually type these up uh, it was back in the day when mm -hmm. people were getting computers and my father-in-law had a computer in the house mm -hmm. and then I actually got access to a computer at work and I would type it up during lunch break, type up the poems and format them into a manuscript and I just uh, um, uh, found a, a, a printing press and they published uh, my books and I Your would... Your first? Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. And then Do you remember I, the title of that book? Oh yeah, yeah. It was... Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Train of thought. Ah, yeah. well, you were all here on the train. <laughs> yeah. It makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had that senior moment, and then, da, yeah, yeah, yeah. it came right in. Check my website. Yeah, check my right website. Yeah. Yeah. It came right in time. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. And so how, how many books are now published that carry your, your poems? Um, there, I, I, I think last count of uh, there is about uh, 12. But what I, I started actually... Um, after I got my poems published by different um, magazines and, and like a lot of the fanzines back then mm -hmm. too, the in, always the independent press, I uh, wanted to, uh, and of course with the poetry readings uh, that came out of uh, this stuff in New York City, I started to put together my um, like anthologies. And so um, they were... Um, First, it, when I started up a reading series in New York City, it was just an opportunity for me to uh, read my poems out loud, okay. you know. And then right. it happened to be at my brother's, uh, um, first, he, was, he had a coffee shop down mm -hmm. in New York City. And so uh, the people who were doing the poetry, uh, they had a disagreement and they're like, they're like, Chris, you write poems. So my brother invited me to do a every other Thursday poetry reading at his place. Yes, and I was like, city. you know, how can I do mm -hmm. this kind of mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. And uh, they just put the mic mm -hmm. in front of me and uh, I started inviting other people to the right. open mic and people would walk by at the open door, turn around and come in, sign up on the list. And awesome. so, yeah, it went on for like a year and a half way back when and uh -huh. it was the alt dot uh, poetry series. Uh -huh. It was uh, alt dot co uh, uh, coffee was the name of the place and mm. so you know we just had a year and a half every wow. other Thursday poetry series right, right. so I put out a self-published anthology of all the people who had read right, at right. that reading mm -hmm. and, uh, my, my first experience of poetry was uh, Spanish romanticism Adolfo Becker okay. and he write these very passionate uh, uh, beautiful I think and I think when I I got older it was Pablo Neruda okay and uh, sure. I had a, I have an ex-girlfriend that she was learning Spanish and, and we, one of our favorite times, I think, was reading these, these poems. And she'd read them in Spanish because phonetically she could read. Okay. She didn't understand, but she could read. Mm -hmm. and some words she could identify. Then on the other side, it was in English. And then I would read it in English. And uh, it, it was so, I think it was one, one of my favorite moments with her was reading because it was me also going back to discover Pablo Neruda. But how did you start this ancient city poet here? Okay, how did so, that come yeah, to well, fast forward. Uh, my wife and I, we always knew that we were going to retire to St. Augustine and, and, and work, you know, that commute in New York City, uh, we knew it wasn't going to last too <laughs> long. 
And sure enough, it, it went for 10 out. years. It wears you out. And uh, Twin Towers came down, oh. and that was a bad Tuesday at work oh. for me, you know? Oh. And it's just like, okay, you know, we, uh, and just keep on going to work every day on 23rd Street. Oh. And, uh, you know, the city, you know, the city pulled together. It was pretty mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when all the planets aligned and we were able to move down here, uh, that was about uh, two years later. Okay. So you know, why we, St. Augustine? Um, we had family okay. down here, and, and my wife and I, as a young couple, mm -hmm. we would come down and okay. uh, vacation like down the, here. The yeah, so we you know got to know the know the area, and uh, sure enough, like I said, all the um, cards lined up, all the plans lined up, and so forth. And when we made the move down here, it was like you know I was left a job that I had had for ten years, and. Uh, um, wasn't sure what the next stage was going to be mm -hmm. in my life, um, but the, the cultural council, uh, which is pretty, act, you know, very active here in town, I mm -hmm. found out about them, and so I told them about my poetry projects and so forth. And uh, got they had little networking things like Anne Craft. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. She was so one of the first council, council, people yes. I met, and Tommy Bledsoe mm -hmm. and Joy D'Elia. Wow. And they're just yeah. uh, so and la creme de la creme, monsieur. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, they were all very supportive of the arts and right. so forth. And uh, then um, I was told that there was an interest for poetry, but it was really Glenda Bailey Marchand uh, asked uh, for all the poets and writers to get together for a uh, um, National Poetry Month right. observation, and that's right. in um, April. Mm -hmm. And so that was back in 2009. Okay. And so uh, I said, well, I know uh, how to do an open mic, and so I offered to do right. that. And so we did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did it on San Marco at the Cultural Council's office at the, mm -hmm. at the time. And it had a fantastic turnout. And then Glenda Bailey Marchand did one two weeks later in April and uh, had like uh, different people attending it and so forth. And then uh, when August rolled around, um, my wife, Mary Beth, she was saying, you know, why don't you do an open mic like you used to do in New York City? And right. so we said, well, we got to find a place to do it. And, wow. and we uh, approached uh, one place that was totally into us. And, so we launched the Ancient City Poets mm -hmm. in August of 2009. Wow. The name actually came from Glenda Bailey Marshawn. She used it in April, and I was like, do you mind if I take it and run with it? And she's like, yeah, absolutely, awesome. and more power to you. So how many poets do you have in this group now? It, it's really, um, we have the sign-up sheet, mm -hmm. and uh, you sign in, you uh, get up when the spirit moves, and you read, and we all, n always have like 15 people. When do you uh, meet? When do you meet? Last Sunday of every month. Last Sunday of every month. Yeah. And where? Right now we're at the Corazon Theater, oh, which a, is the best that's place, a great that place that we've ever been. That is yeah. a great place. And I say best because um, it's catered to performances mm -hmm. and the way it's mm -hmm. designed and so forth. first course. season was all yeah. done there. Absolutely. Tonight, yeah. Show. But I mean, in your monologue, you're talking about like, you know, in like the bar area and, and how things are quiet mm -hmm. when you, well, well, we've been doing poetry readings in coffee shops for many, many years. Oh. And you have the um, different steamed milk oh. and drinks and the blender and all that. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh -huh. but that's a fascinating thing to bring poetry into that atmosphere yeah. where people um, are just going to order coffee and leave and then they decide to mm -hmm. stay because of the um, culture that they're mm -hmm. being exposed mm -hmm. to. Now, so. you're having some poems that were uh, now uh, translated in Polish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's awesome. It is, um, because with this network that I've developed over the years of publishing other people and the mm -hmm. anthologies and so forth, um, just one thing led to another, right. and, uh, um, and of course the international aspect with uh, email and the internet yeah. now. All I mean, social things. Yeah, so I started way back when we were writing letters to people. And, <laughs> Postcards and, and, yeah, and letters. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, they uh, asked me f to send some poems, mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and then they said they wanted to translate it and put the uh, English. Right, on like my Neruda book. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. And so I just got a um, 
text today that they're going to send me a copy of the book. That's and awesome. so this is, you know, a, a, a publisher in Poland who's published me with eight other uh, poets, uh -huh. and Fantastic. the five poems are, will be presented in English and also translated uh -huh. into Polish. So, Talking about yeah. books, what could you tell me about this? Yeah, that's um, a literary magazine. What's, it, that, what's the title of that? AC Papa. What, what does that mean? It means Ancient City Poets okay. and uh, Authors and... Uh, Poets well, and Authors. That's okay. right, yeah, photographers. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> yes, it's lovely. If I yeah. wanted to get this, where would I get it? Could I find uh, it on Amazon? You can, uh, you can find it on Amazon, absolutely. Yep. AC Papa, and it's all these local poets, yeah. and there's photographs also, yeah. and uh, they're so cool because um, some of them are talking about selling a house or talking about the nature in our area. I mean, they all have so many yeah. different themes. Um, I, I went through it the other night and I loved it. I really yeah, did. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. And I loved what you said there talking about snow how uh, the leaves are now the snow That's for it. you. And he has a little editor's um, sure. a prologue or whatever. And uh, it, it was very nice. But yeah. I love that fact. Your oak trees now give you enough leaves that they become like your snow now. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I thank you so much. We've ran out of time. And okay. um, uh, it's, it's awesome. I think it's awesome to have something related to poetry that people can go. And, and people are invited to go and... and and listen or yeah, join and, and or read a poem. Even if it's your first poem, sixth grade, you know, go ahead. That's you know. it, because it's a community open mic. That's and it. uh, it's an opportunity for uh, the more seasoned people to give back to the people who are new and starting out. And that's where I was 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. Let's give them a hand. I thank you so much. After these messages, we'll be back with Mr. Buchanan! Whoa. Billy Buchanan! Hi, my name is Dana. I own Sweet City Cupcakes and we're located at 233 West King Street. We specialize in custom cakes and cupcakes. We use fresh and local ingredients and bake fresh daily. Uh, each of our cupcakes is decorated with a unique look.